Welcome. This is the Cisco CCNA ENSA, also known as the Enterprise Networking Security and Automation course. This course focuses on the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is course 3 of 3. Module 4 is all about ACL concepts. So we're going to be looking at the purpose, we're going to be looking at wildcards, guidelines, and the different types of ACLs. So what's the purpose of an ACL? An ACL is a series of commands that allow for filtering of IP packets. These are called access control entries or ACEs. So initially the router or the layer 3 device does not have an ACL applied. You actually have to apply them to the interface. And then once the device actually has an ACL, it will start filtering based off of these ACEs. So the order of the ACEs actually matter. Again, the ACL is the list of ACEs. And it is important to note that the process is called packet filtering and is, is done sequentially. So when you configure an ACL, the first entry, the, the first ACE, will be the first filter. Then the second AC will be the second filter, and so forth. There is an inherent deny at the end. So if none of the above entries actually filter, there will be an implicit deny at the very end, blocking everything. And we're going to have some examples of how to actually configure this coming up. So there are several tasks performed by our devices that use ACLs to identify types of traffic. For example, we can use ACLs to limit network traffic to increase performance, traffic flow, security, filter off of uh, types, screen hosts that permit certain services, and prioritize certain classes of network traffic. Those are the big reasons to perform ACLs. So packet filtering works between layer 3 and layer 4. And if we are looking at a standard ACL, they will filter layer 3, and they're only looking at source IP addresses. If we're looking at an extended ACL, they will filter at layer 3 using source and or the destination address, but they can also filter based off of TCP or UDP ports. So extended ACLs operate between both layer 3 and layer 4. So the ACL operations have to be applied to an interface. Typically the rule is one ACL per interface, either as it comes into the interface or as it leaves the interface. So for example, we don't want two ACLs on an inbound interface. We can have one physical interface with a rule being applied inbound and a rule being applied outbound that's acceptable. But ACLs do not act on the packets that originate from the router itself, only what is coming into or out of the device. When an ACL is applied to an interface, it will follow a very specific set of rules. First, the router will extract the source IP4 information of the packet header. Second, the router starts at the top of the ACL and compares the source address to each ACE in the sequential order. When a match is made, the router carries out the instructions, either permitting or denying, based off of the ACE. The remaining ACEs are not even analyzed. The first match is what is processed. Lastly, if there's a source IP address that does not match anything, the packet is discarded because again the implicit deny at the very end. The last ACE statement of all ACLs are the implicit deny. So we have a lab going through our ACEs and ACLs. Next, how do we use wildcards in our ACLs to match traffic? Again, wildcards are just a clever way of saying inverse. Here's an example if we want to match certain host bits. You would take the subnet and you would flip them and only allow the ones coming in. What I mean by flip them is literally you write at the subnet in binary, you flip the ones to zeros and the zeros to ones, and that becomes our wildcard mask. Here's an example. If we take this IPv4 address, we can match it 100%. 
that would permit that address. If it was a slash 24, the wildcard would be a 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.255 because the first three octets are all ones and the fourth octet's all zeros, we inverse them or we flip the ones and zeros, leaving the wildcard to be 0 .0 0.0.0.255. I have separate videos explaining how to do our wildcard masks. So how would we write the entry? We would write the entry as access list 10, the action, here we're doing permits, the IP, and the wildcard mask. So what happens if we want to actually match an address range? We would do the same thing. We'd do a wildcard mask with the network ID, and you'd take the subnet of the network ID, inverse it, and that would be the appropriate response. Again, inverse, you take the subnet, flip the ones and zeros, and that is our wildcard mask. So calculating the wildcard masks, that's a lot of words. Realistically, all you have to do is take the subnet, write it out in binary, flip the ones and zeros, that is our wildcard mask. And then depending on the type of ECL you're trying to do, you can do it either based off of network or a single host, and that works. We have two keywords in our ACEs. We have host and any. Host basically means single uh, device, any means everything, it means anything. So it will be substituting for 255, 255, 255, meaning it will accept all inbound uh, addresses. So moving on, there are some very specific rules in applying ACLs. First of all, one out, one in. Doesn't matter if it's IPv4 or IPv6, they want you to have one rule per IP version. So that means if we are doing filtering, we can only we should only have one IP access list on a interface. IPv4 access lists are separate from IPv6 access lists. They are completely separate. And normally it's one on the inbound, one on the outbound, but you can have the same physical interface one filtering in, one filtering out. And you can apply that to each interface as necessary. So other guidelines. You base ACLs on the organizational security policies. You write out what you want to, the ACL to do, and then you actually configure the ACL. Don't try to do it without actually writing out the flow. There's a lot of mistakes there. Normally, use a text editor so you can comment what the ACL is supposed to be doing. Remark so that you understand what the ACL is supposed to be doing, you back it up. I've seen a lot of people struggle in this area because they will write out the ACL without actually writing the flow down and they'll filter traffic not understanding that they didn't want to do certain things. So lastly, types of ACLs. I know we already said it, they're standard and extended. There are way more than just these two, but these are the more common two IPv4 uh, types. Standard, permit or deny based off the source. Extended, they will deny or permit based off the source, the destination, protocols, source and destination, or ports, and so much more. Normally for a exam, we are looking at taking the extended form. Cisco has two specific rules about placements with these. The standard ACL do not look at the destination, therefore you should be able to place them as close to the destination network as possible. The rule of thumb for the extended list ACL is since it does allow for source and destination, you should place the extended ACL as close to the source of the traffic as possible and this will filter traffic based on the different criteria. So standard close to the destination extend it as close to the source as feasible. We have numbered ACLs, so instead of giving a ACL a name, we can do a number. Normally the numbers are 1 through 99, that's a standard. Also 1300 to 1999 are also standard. 
if we're dealing with extended ACLs, they are going to be between 100 and 199 or between 2000 and 2699. Those are going to be our extended. We have named ACLs as well. And just like numbered ACLs, we would do either standard or extended. And here we have an example of an extended ACL that is being named FTP filter. So again, placement. Placement is extremely important. Extended is always near the source. The standard is always near the destination. And this will be brought up probably a dozen times. So you will get tested on this. Uh, I've also seen this on the actual exam. So placement for our ACLs are crucial in understanding. So where do we place our ACLs? Again, the extent of the organizational control is where we're trying to go. So if we do not control the destination, we get to the closest portion that we control to the destination as possible. So uh, if we are looking at filtering uh, because of bandwidth, we may want to uh, filter on a traffic at the source to prevent transmission. So that's why if we're doing extended, we want it closer to the source. Also, one of the main reasons for our location is easeability for our configuration. So let's go ahead and let's look at an example of our standard ACL. Here we're going to be filtering from one network to another network. As it goes, I believe we're filtering from so we would be blocking all traffic from 192.168.10.0 network going to the 192.168.30 network. So we would be placing that inbound on R3. So following those rules, that is where we would filter. If we are doing it reverse, we would be looking at as it goes into R3. So here is the example again. We'd be doing an inbound. The standard ACL can be applied as it comes into the serial interface. However, it also filter to network to the 192.168.31 network. In this example, that would be an issue. So the standard ACL should not be applied to this interface because we don't want to filter it off of everything we'd be doing it based off of the outbound gig zero interface instead. That way, we do not have to worry about it filtering to the 30 network. Again, since the standard ACL is only filtered off of the source address, we don't get to manipulate the destination. Therefore, that's why I'd be using the gig zero zero instead of the serial. If we were to do this via a ex extended ACL, we would be doing it on the serial. Well, we in that case, we'd be doing it on the serial on router a site A's side. That way, it's closest to the destination. Sorry, closest to the source instead of the destination. But you could filter based off of the source and destination type addresses. So again, extended ACL placement. The rule of thumb is closest to the destination as possible, and we want to look at the data as it leaves. So here we have the organization only place an ACL on device that they control. Therefore, the extended ACL placement must be determined the context of where the organization uh, does control. In this example, company A wants to deny Telnet and FTP to company B's network by promoting all other traffic. We can do that a few different ways, but normally what we could be doing is filtering it off of serial outbound. And we can do that to the destination. We'd be doing it to serial one on router one, that way it's filtering it as it's going to its destination. Here again is the example. There are two possible interfaces, the serial or the gig interface. If we do it on the serial, there can be applied an outbound rule. This solution will process all packets leaving R1, including packets from the 10.0 network. So 
we can, if we do it on the gig 001 of R1, the extended, can, uh, the extended ACL can be applied to the inbound on the gig 001, and only packets from the 11 network would be subjective to this rule. So again, it kind of depends what are we trying to do. Are we trying to block all traffic? Or are we trying to block traffic from one network? So it, it depends. That why, that's why the rule of thumb is write them out, draw out the data flow, and then proceed from there. And that is it for this module. If you got any questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you.